In this video, we're going to look at the fundamental debugging features in C-Line. C-Line has powerful debugging features built on top of GDB and LLDB. For most people, this should all be pre-configured and ready to go. But if not, or you want to use a different build, you can set them up in the Toolchain's Preferences page under Build Execution Deployment. Now note that if you're running on Windows and using the MSVC toolchain, we actually bundle our own LLDB-based debugger for MSVC, and that's the one that you'll find right here. Now, if you've ever used a debugger in any IDE before, you'll be instantly familiar with most of the core features. For example, setting a breakpoint, which we can do by hitting Command F8 on a Mac, or Control F8 on Windows or Linux. You can also do that from the Run menu, with Toggle Line Breakpoint, but using the keyboard is a much faster and smoother experience. If you forget any of the shortcuts, you can go to the menu and see them there. Or you can use Find Action to find shortcuts and menu options for any of the features that C-Line offers. Debugging works best when you use the keyboard shortcuts for the commands you use most of the time, so do invest some time to learn them. Breakpoints can also be toggled by clicking directly in the gutter to the left of the editor. And whichever way you do it, you'll see the breakpoint here as a red dot when it's set and enabled. This dot is also your gateway to additional options that we'll come back to in a moment. With one or more breakpoints set, you can start a debugging session by clicking the debug icon here, or from the run menu, or of course with the keyboard shortcut shown. That's Control D on the Mac or Shift F9 on Windows and Linux. The program will now run until it hits that first breakpoint. By default, that's exactly what breakpoints are for, of course. But as we'll see in the next video, there are some more advanced uses too. Notice that now the code is running, the breakpoint icon has changed to include a little tick mark, which means the breakpoint is active and reachable. If a breakpoint can't be set because it's not in the current executable or if debug symbols are missing, then the icon will change to this instead to indicate that it will never be hit. At this point, all threads, and in this case there's only one, are suspended, and we can examine the state of the process as a snapshot in time. As you might be familiar with while debugging, a debugger tool window pops up, and we can see the values of all the variables currently in scope, including the this pointer if we're in a member function. We see simple values shown directly here. More complex types can be expanded to show their members, and many standard types, like std string, have visualizers built in that show you the interesting value at the top level so you don't have to dig into the implementation. But you can still do that too if you need to. You can even add your own visualizers using GDB or LLDB's Python integration, but that's beyond the scope of this tutorial. On the left, we see a stack, and we can move up and down the stack to see variables in different scopes. And if we have multiple threads, we can also switch to a different one here. A nice feature that you may not have seen before is that the variable values are also shown in line with the code, right alongside their declaration. This can be a great way of debugging in context. Once you're at a breakpoint, you can start single stepping, of course. You can use these icons here, but again, do learn the shortcuts. Now there's a few options here. First, we have the usual suspects. Step over, single steps at the current level. Step into, steps into functions. And step out, executes to the end of the current function and out. Unless, of course, it hits a breakpoint along the way. You can also run to any arbitrary line of code, as if you'd set a temporary breakpoint there. But there are some other options too. And these are best seen from the Run Debugging Actions menu. They all start with the word Force. But these are not just Jedi mind tricks. Force Step Over and Force Run to Cursor work just like their forceless cousins, but they ignore any breakpoints along the way. Force step into, on the other hand, steps into a function even if there's no source code available. In this case, you'll get a disassembly view instead. You can still single step through it or step back out. And finally, for this first video, we'll take a look at exception breakpoints. These allow you to automatically break into the debugger whenever an exception is thrown or caught. To set these, go to the run menu and view breakpoints. 
or use the shortcut shown there. Alternatively, from the debug tool window, click the view breakpoints icon here. We'll look at this dialog in more detail in the next video, but for now, look for exception breakpoints and its immediate child. Make sure it's enabled. And at the bottom, you can select whether it will break when an exception is thrown, caught, or both. The other options here give you more control over what happens when the breakpoint is triggered, and that's what we'll look at in the next video. With that set, we now see the debugger break when an exception is thrown. Because we also set when caught, we can continue from here and see it fire again at the catch site. So, we've covered the fundamentals of debugging with C-Line, including setting breakpoints, inspecting variables both in the debugger tool window and in line in the code, moving up and down the stack, stepping through and over code, including into a disassembly of code you don't have the sources for, and breaking on throwing or catching exceptions. There's more to C-Line's debugger though, and in the next video, we're gonna look at some more advanced features and techniques. But that's it for now. If you don't already have C-Line, you can download a 30-day free trial and get debugging.